Hello and welcome once again to our Eshanzeni College TVET Clinic channel. My name is Mr. C. Tobejane and today we'll be looking at Industrial Electronics N4. Now we know that Industrial Electronics uh, it's a series, it's a subject that is continuing from N1, N2, N3 and N4. So today we are going to be looking at uh, direct current theory equations. Now we know that when we deal about direct current theory equations back in N2 you were calculating circuit by making use of uh, Ohm's law. When you got to N3 you were calculating circuit by making use of Kirchhoff's laws. So with N4 there's a new law that is added and this is, these are two laws or rather theorems if we may put it that way. So the first theorem is superpositions theorem and the other theorem is Thevenin's theorem. But today we are only going to be looking at superpositions theorem. We're going to be doing just a circuit just to show how to go about calculating a certain current that is present in a particular circuit by making use of superpositions theorem. So we have our question here in question one. Uh, with the first circuit here, let's try and zoom this circuit in here. So we have our circuit here, question one, in figure one. So if you can look at the circuit, we have two voltage sources, right? We have V1 and V2. These two voltage sources, they are both connected in such a way they, that they all supply to a certain resistor. We have three resistors, 10 ohms, 12 ohms, and 8 ohms in that particular circuit. Right. So the question says, use superpositions method to calculate the current flowing through the 8 ohm resistor for the circuit in figure 1. So we have that particular circuit there. Now, let us try and calculate that. So we have our circuit here, and we need to use superpositions theorem to try and calculate this that we have here. So let us just redraw the circuit and see what we have here because we need to work in different ways. Right? So we have our circuit in this way. There is our voltage source here. We have our resistor there and another resistor there and we have our voltage source there and in between here there is a third resistor. So this is 10 ohms, this is 12 ohms and this is 8 ohms. Now V1 is given as 5 volts and then we have V2 which is given as 10 volts. So if you can look at this um, if you can look at this circuit here, right, if you can look at this circuit, the supplies, they are connected in such a way that the direction of current will eventually meet somewhere. So we have current moving from a uh, voltage source 1, we have another current moving from voltage source 2, so I'm going to call this I2 and call that I1. But if you can look at this, I2 and I1 somehow they meet there to make up a current I1 and I2. <clears throat> what does this mean now? This means that the current received by our resistor here is a combination of this and that. Can you see that? So the current which is received by our 8 ohm resistor is a combination of the two currents which is supplied by the two separate voltages. So we need to use superpositions theorem here. We need to use superpositions theorem here. By making use of superpositions theorem, we need to be able to calculate the current that flows through the 8 ohm resistor. Use superpositions method to calculate the current that flows through the 8 ohm resistor. This means that our 8 ohm resistor, 8 ohm resistor is equal to our load resistor. First things first, we need to 
a short circuit. We have two. We need to divide them into two. First, we can choose to short circuit V2. Right? When you short circuit V2, it means that you are omitting the voltage source. When you omit the voltage source, what are you doing? You are saying to the circuit, only receive current from, or rather only receive voltage from the first uh, voltage source. So when we omit that one, this becomes our new, this becomes our new what? This becomes our new circuit. We have 5 volts, we have 10 ohms, we have 8 ohms here, and then we have 12 ohms there. So we're going to call this one our circuit A. We're going to call this one our circuit A. So let us calculate based on our circuit A now. Let us calculate based on our circuit A. First things first, we're going to apply Ohm's law. When we apply Ohm's law, we need to calculate the total resistance. Right? We need to calculate the total resistance of the circuit. So, RT will be given as 12 multiplied by 8 divided by 12 plus 8 plus 10. Why? Because, because 12 and 8, they are connected in parallel with each other. And then this combination is later connected in series with the uh, last resistor, with the 10. Can you see that? Right. So, here, what is it that we get here? We have our calculator. Make sure you have your calculator at all times. So, we have 12 multiplied by 8, 12 plus 8 plus 10. 12 plus 8 plus 10. This should be able to give us 14.8 ohms. This is the total resistance that we find there. And then we go on and calculate our total current. Our total current will be V over RT. That is Ohm's law. V is 5 divided by 14.8 this should give us what? 5 divided by 14.8. This will be 0 0.338 ohms. Right. So, this is the total current in the circuit. Now, we go back now to the circuit, right? We go back to the circuit. We are looking for the current that flows through the 8 ohm resistor. We are looking for the current that flows through the 8 ohm resistor. And then now we need to use a current divider rule. We need to use a current divider rule to find the current that flows there. The current divider rule says that I 8 ohms will be equal to the opposite resistor of 8 ohms divided by the opposite resistor of 8 ohms plus the load resistor, which is 8 ohms, multiplied by IT. Multiplied by IT. So this is a current divider rule. This is a current divider rule. So which one is the opposite resistor? An opposite resistor of the load is the resistor that receives current last, if I may try and explain it that way. The resistor that receives current last, that is the opposite resistor. Look at this. When 5 ohms supplies current, 10 ohms will, when 5 volts supplies current, 10 ohms will get the current first. The current will then split into 2, right? It will go to 8 and then lastly 12. So 12 becomes our opposite resistor because it gets current first. 10 is not an opposite resistor. It's said to be an immediate resistor. Why? Because it gets current first. Right? So 12 divided by 12 plus 8 multiplied by 0 0.338. This should give us 12 divided by 12 plus 8, multiplied by 0 0.338, this gives us 
zero point two zero three zero three not ohms uh, but amperes amperes right so this is the current that the eight ohm resistor receives right when five volts is producing or conducting right so now let us short circuit v1 let us short circuit v1 now let us short circuit v1 now let us short circuit v1 so short circuit v1 short circuit v1 short circuit v1 when we short circuit v1 this is what we have that means v2 will be the only uh, voltage supplying this is 10 volts this is 12 ohms this is still 8 ohms and that is 10 and then we call this our current or our circuit b so now we calculate based on b we calculate based on b now the same thing that we did before we calculate the total resistance right rt will be equal to 10 times 8 10 plus 8 plus 12 because the same thing happened here 10 and 8 are now connected in parallel series to 12 10 and 8 are now connected in parallel series to 12 so 10 times 8 10 plus 8 plus 12 this would give us 16.444 ohms 16.444 ohms we calculate it this side we calculate it this side it it's gonna be 10 volts 10 volts divided by the total resistance so it's gonna be 10 divided by 16.4 Four, four. 10 divided by 16.444 this should be able to give us 0 0.608 amps 8 amps let's fix this SI units here let's fix that this should be amps right that should be amps like that so we move again to our current divider rule our current divider rule our current divider rule so we're going to call this i8 ohms a and this one will be i8 ohms b the same thing r opposite r opposite plus r load multiplied by it R opposite plus R load multiplied by RT. The opposite resistor in this case is 10. 10 plus 8 multiplied by 0 0.608. So 10 over 10 plus 8 multiplied by 0 0.608. This would be giving us 0 0.338. This would be giving us 0 0.338 right now we have successfully obtained the current that the 8 ohm resistor will have if v2 is supplying but remember we said that when the two voltages are supplying they add up together here to make i1 plus i2 this means that the 8 ohm resistor receives a current from both so therefore i8 ohms will be equal to i8 ohms a plus i8 ohms b this is like i1 plus i2 so it's 0 0.203 plus uh, 0 0.338 so this would give us what 
this should be able to give us 0 0.5 uh, 0 0.5 sorry this is 0 0.5 for one amps, zero point five four one amps. This is basically how to go about doing it. You are given this circuit and you are asked to calculate uh, by making use of superposition theorem. Please note, please note, please note. If my voltages, they are connected in such a way that they both supply they both supply right this means that the current entering there will be i1 plus i2 but if my voltages are connected in such a way that when they supply they are opposing each other in this way they are opposing each other with plus minus minus plus here we had plus minus plus minus so here it's going to be i1 minus i2 so i hope this clears up all the questions you've been having about superposition theorem so this is one simple circuit that you may encounter so the next time we meet we're going to be doing a more complex circuit and this circuit here we are going to be looking at how to calculate that particular current if the circuit is complex with a large number of resistors connected there but this is it for today i hope the lesson was enjoyable the lesson was fun and this is what we do this is Eslan Zeni college tv clinic and this is mr c tobejane speaking i hope you check us out on our social media platform till we meet